afternoon, everyone. I would like to wish the very warmest of welcomes to everyone here today. My name is Becky Kemp Arnold, and I am honored to be here as your 2021 to 2022 Student Union President. It is the greatest privilege and a truly humbling experience to speak to you all on such a special and monumentous occasion as your graduation. I know that those of you here today have had to wait a particularly long time for this day. And even though you have already begun new journeys after graduating, I hope that this can be a chance for you to celebrate your hard work and spend time with your loved ones. I would like to take a moment to say thank you to my predecessor and your 2020 to 2021 SU President, Sarah Jones. Sarah cannot be here giving this speech today, but she shares in my message of true happiness for all of your amazing accomplishments. My purpose of being here today is to wish the biggest of congratulations to every single one of our graduates for persevering through the many successes and occasional failures that have led you to where you are today. And when I look around this room, I see exceptional individuals who have overcome unimaginable challenges. Undoubtedly, you have had to adapt to the uncertainty of living through a pandemic, as well as managing the everyday trials of student life. The last two years have truly shown that life can be unpredictable and challenging, but you survived it and built skills in resilience and adaptability that will stay with you for life. On behalf of myself and all the graduates here, thank you to the family, friends, and staff members, those who have gone above and beyond to support our students, regardless of if they can be here celebrating with us today or not. Whether you have been an educator or a loved one on call through stressful times, I am sure that we can all agree your support has played a vital role in getting our students to where they are today. It is so important to show gratitude to those who have supported you and stuck by your side. And remember, there are always those who believe in you, even, when it is, even if it is hard to find that strength within yourselves. Although I'm not yet a graduate like yourselves, I have no doubt that your path to get to this point has been one of continuous learning. It is very likely you have made sacrifices and faced adversity. However, I hope you can look back with pride on the lessons your experiences have taught you. We all come from different walks of life, but each of you brought a unique perspective and breathed life into our community. I hope you can remember that your legacy lives on through the relationships and memories you have made, as well as the hope you have given to existing students by getting here today. It is incredibly impressive how you conquered academic challenges as well as building communities for your friendships, classmates, and societies. Many of you may have felt you matured or grew up in your time at St. George's, and in a demanding and pressurizing environment, this can be very tough. Despite this, you gave one another love and support, which is what I believe makes us all stronger. The lessons I have learned from you, the students, are not ones which can be taught in lectures. You have taught me that you can, of course, be a scientist and a talented performer. You have taught me that coffee is essential to getting through a long day in the library. But most importantly, you have taught me that united we are stronger together. As you move through your wonderful careers, I hope you can stay ambitious and determined. But I feel it is very important for me to remind you of something, and that is to show yourselves the same compassion and forgiveness which you are likely to give freely to others. There are tough times ahead, but you have proven to yourselves that you can get through it. 
Knowing you all gives me hope for the future of science and healthcare, but equally hope for humanity. This is why every one of you is an inspiration to me and a credit to St. George's. I hope that today you can really feel proud of yourself and bask in the glory of getting to the place where you once dreamed of being. You did it. Congratulations to everyone here, and I will leave you with the very wise words of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Believe in yourself, learn, and never stop wanting to build a better world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Becky. So here we are at this very joyful event. There is, of course, formality to it, but it really should represent a celebration, albeit one that perhaps you didn't think would ever happen, and indeed has been quite delayed. I'd like to welcome everybody in this auditorium and anybody that may be watching on catch-up as it gets recorded outside us or somebody doing that. Graduates, parents, supporters, friends, we have our chair of council, other colleagues and guests. And for this ceremony we have the MACE from the University of London and we're also delighted that Mary Thompson, the Vice-Chancellor, has also joined us. So we haven't been able to hold in-person ceremonies since 2019. This month, over seven ceremonies, we're hosting the cohorts of 2020, 2021 as today, and also of the current year. They've all been wonderful occasions. Next, a piece of disappointing news. We had hoped that Bill Bryson would be with us at this moment. He unfortunately is unwell, and he, as you know, is somebody probably everybody has come across in various circumstances, like either read, reading his books or perhaps observing him on the television. I am pleased that despite his great disappointment that he can't be with us now, he has sent his speech and so you will be hearing his words as a part of John Friedland's oration. So, before proceeding, there's another piece that I'd like to acknowledge. We're all aware that COVID took a great deal from us in terms of our personal lives. But the other thing it took from us often were loved ones. And I just would like to acknowledge if there's anybody sitting here who has metaphorically an empty seat next to them, or indeed as part of your wider celebrations, you're missing key people in your life due to losses over COVID, that we acknowledge that. And do say we understand what an incredibly difficult time it's been, and really what a triumph to get here in spite of everything. Back in March 2020, we were forced to work remotely in the main. There were virtual meetings and online lessons that became the new normal. We all of us had to adapt and find different ways to cope. And many of the people here, our students and those that were in the early stages of their career, went over and above during these darkest times. There was the spirit of the St George's community and the family feel. And examples of things that were done were more than 170 of our students distributing food and self-care items throughout the hospital. This is just one small example of multiple acts of selflessness and serving others. We can't name check everybody, but I hope you understand who you were and also the difference that you made. COVID-19 also aligned very closely with our world-renowned 
research strengths in infection. We pivoted a lot of our activity to this cause, and it meant that our university has directly contributed to helping the world find its way through this biggest ever global health crisis in our lifetimes. Researchers from our Vaccine Institute played a role in the development of COVID vaccines, acting as a site for major trials of the Moderna, Oxford, Novavax and Imperial vaccines. The Institute work continues today and currently, for example, we're leading the first Omicron specific trial. Last month, we welcomed alongside the hospital the now former Health and Social Care Secretary, Sajid Javid Tatuting. On his visit, he showcased the £1 billion government partnership investment with the vaccine manufacturer, Moderna. He chose to come to St George's in part because of our world-leading team of vaccine researchers, led by our own Professor Paul Heath. Earlier in the same year, St George's worked alongside obstetrician Professor Asma Khalil to show that COVID vaccination during pregnancy, which frankly was very contentious at the time, did have important benefits. It reduced the chance of stillbirth by 15% and very importantly, was shown to be safe for mother and baby. We're continuing to find ways to contribute. Our enterprise team has joined forces with a London-based business, and we're looking to develop a reusable face mask. And as this mask is breathed in and out from, it can also detect whether they are COVID negative or COVID positive. As I hope you've seen from the programme and already understand, our guiding mission has been to pursue excellence in academic medicine, healthcare and science for many years. And I'm delighted to say that we survive scrutiny externally, as happens about every five to seven years of the research conducted in the UK. And this recognition came before the C word was ubiquitous. In May, we received the outcome of the latest REF or Research Excellence Framework. We were absolutely delighted that amongst 129 institutions, we were ranked joint eighth for impact. Research impact means that you've taken discoveries and made concrete practical benefits arise from them. 91% of our research was not just nationally excellent, but rated as world leading. It's a testimony to our researchers at St George's and frankly to the many links that we forge all over the globe. Other examples are finding solutions to other knotty problems. Antibiotic resistance. Neonatal sepsis affects about 3 million babies a year, and this dangerous blood infection is associated with a high rate of death. Whether you live in a rich or poor country, the chances are that the antibiotics won't be working, and we're setting about developing new and successful treatments. Another area of our expertise is that around sudden cardiac death. I'm sure you've seen stories of elite athletes, often on football pitches or elsewhere, suddenly collapsing. We have a whole team of scientists and clinicians, led by Sanjay Sharma, that are looking at this. And what we want to do is find out what are the risk factors for electrical patterns and abnormalities in people before they've come to devastating consequences. We've done a lot of work and we've actually changed international recommendations. And in one cohort of black athletes, we've been able to detect 
from less than 50% of these abnormalities to being able to detect 84%. That gap genuinely will change lives and save them. The other thing that's happened recently is our visibility. Now, when you have a colleague or a friend or a, a member of the family that belongs to an institution, your ears prick up, don't they, when you hear them mentioned on the radio or you read something in print about them. But it's not just because your ears are pricked up because of the association. We have had a massive increase in our media presence. You might have seen the BBC Two documentary recently that was entitled Unvaccinated. That was one example. But for many months during the pandemic, many of our staff were called on to describe the hard science, but also communicate the relevance and, as the facts evolved, make sense of them. We've had a number of other markers of the scheme. Professor Tom Harris has been elected a fellow of the Academy of Medical Sciences, and Professor John Friedland was appointed to the UK Health Security Agency Advisory Board. Another thing that we're very proud of, because of the nature of our research and our joint collaboration with the Trust, is that we entered another competition, and that was to be formally designated and funded as a clinical research facility. We won that against very stiff competition and also, frankly, some anti-London bias at the moment. Our teaching is proudly embedded in this clinical, scientific and research environment. Making our high quality education accessible to people from all backgrounds is also fundamental to what St George's is. I hope you've recognised already that our community is diverse. Our goal is to attract talent regardless of circumstance and we deliver success. A recent study by the Institute of Fiscal Studies and the Sutton Trust looked at the proportion of students from low-income backgrounds at every university in the country. They assessed the students at the age of 30 in terms of employment and income. And I'm pleased to report that we were ranked seventh in the country for positive social mobility. In the generation of the next healthcare workforce, this is so important. I understand, as a practicing doctor, how important it is that our workforce is truly representative of the wider society that we serve. And finally, to you as students, we're enormously grateful by what you contributed when you were with us and your wider talents, be they entrepreneurial or on the stage, you all made a tremendous effort when you were with us. I'd like to thank you for everything. You're already going on via employment and other community endeavours to be fabulous ambassadors for us. So regardless of the path that you take, I do hope that you had a very positive experience while you studied with us, that you're now reaping the rewards of that for today, it's a pause. Not an ordinary day, but a day to immerse yourself in the wonderful love and pride that is here from those that have come to support you. We are really looking forward to what you achieve next. Thank you. It's now time to greet former students whose achievements the university celebrates today. Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present the graduates from the Diagnostic Radiography Programme. Jahan Abdul.
Yasmin Abdullahi Ali. Ayan Ahmed. Hello, fella. How's it going? Endurance Akpi. Magda Ali. No Shaman Amin. Saima Begum. Awarded the best research project, Catherine Boonid. Victory to Joki. <laughs> Chahitha Chowdhury. <laughs> Raisha Chowdhury. Arabella Cox. Orla Croak. Caitlin Kutaya. Sumeya El Ghifari Barnett. Jessica. Jessica Garung. Fardosa Hersey. Maria Hussein. Hmm? Saida Saba Kalim. Aisha Kazim. <laughs> Raima Khan. <laughs> Rajna Khan. <laughs> Waisa Khan. Annabelle King. <laughs> My Mangat. <laughs> Aisha Manjothi. <laughs> Charlotte Gumumbi Mulambo. Ikram Mohammed. <laughs> Sabitri Nembang. <laughs> right, <hello. laughs> Joseph Nganji. <laughs> Patricia Okafor. Faduma Osman. <laughs> Fatima Paracha. <laughs> Emily Roberts. <laughs> Sena Suleiman.
Duluxi Thermo Sealand. UACE Eucadia. Nabakawa Vivian Wagamba. Shumwali. Awarded the Principal's Prize and Award. Fahema Youssef. Adnan Zahur Ali. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present the graduates from the healthcare practice programmes. Akinteo Akintaro. Okay. George Ebu Ntiamoa. Olu Washei Alabi. Danuta Bangaru. Charlotte Booth. Laura Byrne. Lucy Derrick. Bashiridun Dohahi. Angela Durant. <laughs> Lucy Emmanuel Enu. <laughs> Juliana Isioma Esilor. <laughs> Joe Garces. Lena Garley. Karen Jakeman. Fiona Goodman. Rosie Harris. Moran K.G. Lawson. <laughs> Richard McDonald. <laughs> Vida McBelly Asimadu. <laughs> Emma Morley. The Mendrasami Munaru. <laughs> Michelle Nichols. <laughs> Oyoyemi Olanayi. <laughs> Ariel Joy Panagitan. Carla Rock. <laughs> Yvonne Santos. <laughs> Polly Suleiman. <laughs> C. 
Susan Villas. Principal, moving on to the awards for Graduate Certificate in Healthcare Practice, I have the pleasure to present Stephanie Agumang Kremper. <laughs> Benita Douglas. <laughs> Melissa Jane Hunter. Paula Masange. <laughs> Sheba Matthew. <laughs> For the awards of BSc in Healthcare Practice, I have the pleasure to present Wendy Mablonzi. <laughs> Catherine Malanga. For the awards of BSc Honours in Healthcare Practice, I have the pleasure to present Tracy Christmas. <laughs> Vicky Garton. <laughs> Maya Van Sominaden. <laughs> Sunita Shrestha. Lucy Keating. For the postgraduate diploma in healthcare practice, Mila Warren. Vice Chancellor, moving on to the awards for MSc Healthcare Practice, I have the pleasure to present Laura Bocking. Shabana Jabeen. Sandra McNulty. Ethna Morris. Lijun Ding. Diana Nusavate. Presented with the Masters of Research in Clinical Research, Nadia Bashir. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present the graduates from the Department of Paramedics. Abigail Smith. <laughs> Kay Eyre. <laughs> Sean Latham. <laughs> Becky Vickers. Benjamin Adam. <laughs> Zoe Allen. <laughs> Hannah Batha. <laughs> Abby Baldwin. <laughs> Jessica Bates. Robin Best. <laughs> Awarded the Oliver King and Immersive Education Prize, Stella Branthorn Foster. <laughs> Abby Bryant. <laughs> Jack Burton.
Ian Campbell. Thomas Campbell. Ashley Carter. Bethany Clark. Liam Clark. Sina Coleman. Jade Cowley. Yasmin Crosby. Bethany Crouch. Katie Davis. Reese Davis. Elaine Diaz de Souza. Leanne Diaz de Souza. Emily Dobbin. Awarded the Outstanding Endeavour Prize, Jordan Dodge. Bethany Donner. Megan Jerning. Catherine Elliott. Katie Emery. Hanan Fekir. Awarded the Overall Achievement Prize, Donna Finnis. <laughs> Jessica Garland. <laughs> Emily Garner. <laughs> Hannah Goodyear. Calla Gordon. Jasmine Hall. Holly Hall. Katie Harding. Sam Harvey. Benjamin Hemmings. <laughs> Rosalind Hickman. <laughs> Eleanor Hughes. <laughs> Olivia Isaac. <laughs> Thomas Kersey. Jessica Kirby. Grace LaRouze. Amy Lloyd. Joshua Lott. Brent Lovell. Jake McCann. Carly McCarran. Claire McDonough. Sinead McEwen. Charlotte Miller. Hazel Miller Meggs. 
Roshan Musabika. Tarani Palvan. Philippa Pickering. Roxat Ritchie. Andrew Robothan. James Ross. Beth Rustrick. Callum Scott. Claire Sharkey. Joshua Shepherd. James Sibley. Paul Simpson. Carolyn Skull. Annalisa Lecky. Dominic Thomas. Jessica Tyler. Ben Vickers. Harriet Walton. Nicola Weeks. Stuart White. Gemma Williams. Stuart Willingham. Elizabeth Young. <laughs> Zuthi Shan Sarah. <laughs> Awarded the Overall Achievement Prize and the Principal's Prize, Louise Zass Bangham. <laughs> Yulia Zelenowicz. Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present the graduates from the Occupational Therapy Programme. Nima Abdullahi. Yvonne Aisu. Maha Atala. Mary Boateng. Gemma Byrne. Awarded the Principal Prize, Renuka Gurung. Stacey Hunt. Loredana Ivanas. <laughs> Taya Bakan. <laughs> Kemi Kaponyi. <laughs> Emma Louise.
Ella Macdonald. Adam Amansaray. Stacey Ofei Boadu. Eunice Omatayo. Alexandra Quirin. Shania Segal. Jodion Taylor. Emily Wilson. Vice Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all the graduates from the physiotherapy programme. Oh, Carola Pronschuk. <laughs> Ashfaq Ahmed. <laughs> Kelly Bateman. Rianne Black. <laughs> Benjamin Chong. <laughs> Jack Cooper. <laughs> Reese Evans. Georgia Fuller. <laughs> Benjamin Golpavar. <laughs> Haley Grimwood. <laughs> Roshan Hall. Tessa Horan. <laughs> Shanza Javid. <laughs> Emily Jenkins. <laughs> Paula Kavuru. Isabella Kerr. <laughs> Hannah Kirby. <laughs> Serene Lamoudi. <laughs> to say I Lampart. Jennifer Marshall. <laughs> Isabel Martin Hernandez. <laughs> Lorna Moulton. <laughs> Katia Niazzi. Lara Oliyemi. <laughs> Richard Osei. <laughs> oh, 
awarded the Excellence in Student Placement Prize, Janki Patel. <laughs> Gabriella Rose Edwards. <laughs> Anna Santos. Maverick Singh. <laughs> Garrett Tan. <laughs> Jasmine Tang. <laughs> Dion Tran. Harry Veyard. <laughs> Sean Wilson. <laughs> Principal, moving on to the awards for MSc Physiotherapy, I have the honour to present Nazrul Amin. Avaha Banfield. <laughs> Jojo Asamaning Boafo. <laughs> George Brooker. My girl. Kieran Dingra Smith. Kira Doyle. <laughs> Aoife Gallagher. <laughs> Kian Graham Minot. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Hannah Maud. Riaz Koyali. <laughs> Dahlia Lebrenz. <laughs> Tony Miller. <laughs> Olua Damalola Nichols. Pradwell Rai. <laughs> Anna Rolfe. <laughs> Adi Dolapo Samo. <laughs> Take time. Jack Whiteside. Lee Zhu. <laughs> that concludes the presentation of graduates from physiotherapy program. I now hand over to Professor John Friedland. Chair of Council, Vice Chancellor, uh, Vice Chancellor of London University, uh, graduates, family and friends. At this point in the ceremony, we had hoped to admit Bill Bryson as Honorary Doctor of Medicine at, of St George's University of London, recognising his work to open up science to new audiences. Two examples are his 2004 book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, which won the Royal Society of Ventus Prize and the extremely prestigious European Union Descartes Prize. Then, in 2019, his book, The Body, A Guide for Occupants, which explains how our bodies function 
won the Sunday Times Science Book of the Year, and even mentioned St. George's and our illustrious alumni, Henry's Gray and Carter, author of the still in print and very well known Gray's Anatomy. As you have heard, unfortunately, he is little unwell and sends his very sincere apologies. And he has asked me to read his remarks in his absence. It's hard to deliver someone else's words, particularly someone as accomplished as Bill Bryson, but I shall do my best. Bill Bryson offers you 10 very simple pieces of advice of things he hopes which will be useful to you. One, take a moment from time to time to remember that you are alive. Now, I know that sounds a little obvious, but it's remarkable, really, how little we reflect upon that singular and gratifying fact. By the most astounding stroke of luck, a tiny portion of all the atoms in the universe somehow came together to make you. And for the tiniest moment in the great span of creation, you have the incomparable privilege to exist, to see and think, and feel and do. Nothing like you has ever existed anywhere in the universe before or ever will again. You are absolutely, gloriously unique. So congratulations. Well done. You really are quite special. Two. Two. But not that special. There are seven billion other people on this planet, every one of them just as important, just as central to the great scheme of things as you are. Don't ever make the embarrassing, unworthy mistake of thinking yourself more vital or significant, more innately worthy than anyone else. You're not. Three, be happy, really happy, more or less all of the time. You really ought to be. You have a million things to be happy about. You are bright and young, and you have your whole lives in front of you. You have been impeccably educated. You live in a rich country. You are fit and young, and still probably have more hair on your head than in your ears and nostrils. And that won't necessarily last forever, believe me. Four. And if you can't be happy, at least don't whinge. It's awful, and it doesn't become you. Indeed, it doesn't get you anywhere. No one will thank you, or admire you more deeply, or say, oh, let's invite Simon and Emma to the party. They're fantastic whingers. <laughs> so stop moaning, it's a waste of oxygen. Five, learn to appreciate small pleasures. If you think about it, most of, of every life is a long, steady, pleasing accumulation of little things, of lovely skies, interesting landscapes, pleasant meals, amusing conversation, stimulating challenges, long walks, good books, contented weekends, hot baths and clean sheets, unexpectedly pleasant encounters, warm embraces, little jokes, soft young children, slobbery pets, and a million things more. Life is mostly good stuff, most of it small and fleeting, much of it barely noticed, but nearly all of it quite splendid. Learn to appreciate the little things. Six, never sneak up on people from behind and startle them in the belief that it's amusing. It's not. Seven. Whatever you want to do in life, go for it. If you want to be a celebrated ballerina or an astronaut or whatever, go for it. At least try. There's nothing worse than getting to middle age and thinking, I could have been a striker for Arsenal, but my dad wanted me to go into accountancy. Tell your dad to go into accountancy. <laughs> you chase your dream. Eight. Above all, be good. In fact, be more than good. 
Be compassionate. Be kind. And particularly, be kind to people who are worse off than you, which you will find is most people. Nine, always buy my books in hardback as soon as they come out. <laughs> 10, and if you remember nothing else from today, remember this. When called upon to speak in public, always keep your remarks brief. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful summer, and wonderful lives beyond. Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of St George's University of London, may I present all the postgraduate and research awards from the Graduate School. For the award of Master of Research in Biomedical Sciences with the Molecular Mechanisms of Cancer, Camilla Cucinotta. For the awards of Master of Research in Translational Medicine, may I present Enoch Chu. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Leon Quay. <laughs> Moving on to the graduates from Genomic Medicine, may I present Paul Eaton. Rachana Kalathrimbaril Ramakrishnan. <laughs> Naomi Limbarachia. <laughs> Sohail Akhtar. Awarded the Genomics Prize and the David Winterbourne Prize in Genomics and Bioinformatics, Martin Bird. <laughs> Zakaria Gami. <laughs> April Hallett. Johan Hargrave. <laughs> Chantal Hooper. <laughs> Uchechi Ikebogwaikwe. <laughs> Yvonne Iro Adumba. Wen K. Lee. Mark Mencius. Nigat Afrin Mohudin. Bushra Musa. <laughs> Elnaz Persia. <laughs> Pavandeep Rehal. <laughs> Jordan Lee Rogers. Sarah Shubar. <laughs> Naima Saeed. <laughs> Dr.
Principal, may I now present the graduates from the Global Health Programme, Deborah Caleb. <laughs> Katrina Davey. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Nicolas de la Rocha. Mahesha Hetiara Chije. Umar Mahud. Kawisha Mohammed. Erika Mula Roa. Tawakitiletu Oleyeke. <laughs> Josie Palmer. <laughs> Moving on to the postgraduate certificate in healthcare and biomedical education, may I present Clara Pietha Pereja. Audrey Tay. <laughs> Mukunuthan Surakantarajas. <laughs> For the awards of Master of Science in Translational Medicine, may I present Aurora Campana. Philip Jukic. <laughs> Awarded the Principal's Prize, Olaratimini Olamidora. <laughs> For the Masters in Sports Cardiology, Kojo Tremor. Lucas Malek. <laughs> Ray Sarimento. <laughs> Norasuk Suwashitanon. <laughs> Deline Vasiman. Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Medicine in Research for a thesis entitled Exploring Efficient Methods of Post-Trial Follow-Up in the Context of ACST-1 and Reveal Randomised Trials, I have the honour to present to you Rebecca Llewellyn Bennett. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Medicine in Research for a thesis entitled Maternal Cardiovascular Markers in Preeclampsia and Fetal Growth Restriction. I have the honour to present to you Helen Perry. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the Award of Doctor of Medicine Research for a thesis entitled Transperineal Ultrasound Assessment of Pelvic Floor Dysfunction. I have the honour to present to you Candy Swong. Vice-Chancellor for the Award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Exercise-Induced Cardiovascular Remodelling in Novice Marathon Runners with focus on left ventricular trabeculation. I have the honour to present to you Andrew De Silva. Vice-Chancellor for the Award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled 
identifying, optimizing, and characterizing antimicrobial peptides against Pseudomonas aeruginosa, I have the honor to present to you Juno Rain Gani. Vice Chancellor for the Award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled The Potential Toxicity of Electronic Cigarettes, I have the honour to present to you Nathan Goldsmith. <laughs> Vice Chancellor for the Award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Expression of Enhanced HIV Broadly Neutralising Monoclonal Antibodies in plants and in development of glycogen-engineered n tobacco host line. I have the honour to present to you Melanie Granditz. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled The Role of Antibodies in Tuberculosis, I have the honour to present to you Andy Tran. Vice-Chancellor for the Award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Functional Analysis of Human Cystic Fibrosis Epithelial Models to Investigate the Efficacy of Genetic Therapy Techniques. I have the honour to present to you Maximilian Woodall. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor for the Award of a Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Multidisciplinary Studies of E-Cigarette Exposure from Cells to Humans. I have the honour to present to you Elisaveta Zikova. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor, that concludes the Postgraduate and Research Awards to be presented at today's ceremony. I now invite Professor James Fell to lead us in the St George's Pledge. The pledge is taken by all graduates on graduation day and it's an opportunity for us to collectively recognise the values that guide us in our professional lives. Reading the pledge aloud is one of the most powerful moments in the academic year. By taking the pledge together we acknowledge values that are central to all our endeavours, uh, such as seeking help, avoiding harm, respecting one another, and the importance of warmth, compassion, and understanding. So I invite all graduates who've graduated today to stand up, please, and read the pledge, which you will find on the last page of your programme. So we'll read that together. I'll just wait for everybody to find their seats again. Make sure that you can see the pledge. Last page of the programme. And we will read together. I pledge myself and promise I will respect the learning and achievements of those professionals in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply to benefit humanity all measures which are required. I will remember that there is an art to all professional endeavors and that warmth, compassion and understanding may equal any other intervention. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call on my colleagues when the knowledge or skills of another are needed. I will respect the privacy of my fellow human beings, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially, I must tread with care where others place their trust in me. I will relate my work to the human state, which may affect a person's family and economic stability. I will remember that I remain a member of society, 
with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, including the most vulnerable and marginalized. I make this declaration solemnly, freely, and in humility. I now call on Christine Swaby, the Chair of Council, to close our ceremony today. Thank you, Jane. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, what a wonderful afternoon of celebration this has been. I'd like to think we're already listening a little bit to those words of Bill Bryson. We're certainly all feeling very happy. I know I am. I hope everybody in the audience is too. But uh, we've also, I think, really celebrated the unique contribution of each and every one of our graduates today. John, if I may just also say thank you for your very eloquent rendition. It's not easy to step into someone's shoes, but you did that beautifully. And I, for one, will be taking those thoughts away and pondering them. There's a lot of good life lessons there. But I just want to speak a few words to the students and congratulate you on what I'm sure will be one step on your journey in your professional careers. And that's a huge commitment that you're making, not just in your pledge, but in that ongoing requirement to continue to study and learn, to stay at the peak of your profession. And, and that is a wonderful professional commitment that you're making, and we will all be the beneficiaries because you will be making in your careers a wonderful contribution to society. So I acknowledge and really applaud that. You should be so proud of everything that you have accomplished. Uh, St. George's is, is a very old institution, as many of you will know, dating back to 1733. And many pioneers in medicine and healthcare have passed through the doors. Uh, John mentioned Henry Gray, whose textbooks on anatomy are still used today. And there was also Edward Jenner, who invented the smallpox vaccine. And that has continued to underpin so much of vaccine research and practice today. As alumni, you are now going to be the guardians and the inheritors of that unique and very proud reputation. But of course, we're not just celebrating that because we're proud of the past, we're also celebrating that as an inspiration for the future. And when I look at all of you, I wonder where your careers will go and how many renowned practitioners or researchers we have amongst us today that future people will mention. But before we close today's ceremony, there are some thank yous to be made. And I hope you will, first of all, join me in saying a really big thank you to our musicians that do such a wonderful job to keep things flowing as you walk across the stage. Also, as you can imagine, organizing an event like this is no mean feat. It requires a huge amount of teamwork, too many individuals to mention. But I would ask you to join me in saying a huge thank you uh, to all the staff at the Barbican and also to the team at St. George's who have been working so hard behind the scenes. And finally, I know that you will all want to acknowledge the very special role that your friends and family and loved ones here today have played in your journey to get to this very successful point as graduates. I think it's fair to say that your achievement is also their achievement. And I wonder if I could ask you all to stand 
so that you can say thank you to all your friends and family who are here today. Thank you, you may sit for a moment. So uh, today you've become fully fledged members of the St. George's family. We really hope that you will stay in touch with us. We'd like to hear about your careers and your successes as, as things go forward. And no doubt we'll engage with some of you in your ongoing training and development in the future. Uh, I will encourage you to visit the alumni and development team outside. They're always keen to find ways of staying in touch with you. Uh, but I just want to conclude by adding my congratulations to you all on this really fantastic achievement. Um, and I would ask everyone if they could now stand. We will conclude with the national anthem. And then if you can remain standing while the procession leaves the auditorium. Thank you very much. Thank you. 